If you want to learn American English, why would you watch Downton Abbey? Or if you want to learn Australian English, watching Bollywood films may not be the best move. And what if you want to learn about Dutch Christmas time culture? Watching Love Actually may not be the best choice. Instead, you would want to watch Alice's Lifte. When you feel like surrounding yourself with Portuguese, a very good decision, by the way, the tendency is to look in familiar places. Yes, I mean Netflix. But there is a brand new series that just came out, and it is not on Netflix. Actually, it's right here in front of you. I'm very happy to announce that I'm finally putting aside Portuguese and starting a brand new venture. I present you Tugawood Productions. No kidding. What I mean is a brand new series right here on YouTube. The best part? It has subtitles. And probably men painfully made. Hola, eu sou Caterina. This is the language in school, the place where I help you find your voice in European Portuguese, but not before you listen. Because if you cannot understand what people say back, um, having conversations is going to be harder. But don't worry, vai correr tudo bem. Exactly. The new series is called Vai Correr Tudo Bem. If you don't know the expression, after watching the sixth uh, episode, you will, and everything will be okay. This is one we use a lot. The series was created by the humorist Guilherme Girinhas. I'll leave the description to the playlist below. Today, I want to walk you through the first four episodes that have already come out to explain. Number one, why watching Portuguese content outside of Net Netflix helps. Number two, I'm going to explore different ways of actually watching this series and how much Portuguese you can get out of it. Number three, it's actually an amazing one because it's actually the best piece of advice you can get when learning a language, specifically Portuguese, and it's given within the series. Okay, to start off, I think it's important to mention that this video is not against Netflix films or series per se. It's about decon deconstructing the belief that we all have to do exactly what we do, what we used to, but with Portuguese audio. Now, imagine someone had the idea of dubbing the English series Downton Abbey into American English. God knows why. So nothing changes. We still have a chronicle of the lives of a British aristocratic family at the start of the 20th century and their servants. The entire context and cultural references are British. Only it sounds North American English. Another example, imagine you're learning Spanish and you want to find American series or films that, have, that are dubbed in Spanish. Now, super easy to find. And fair enough, you will learn a lot of, of the Spanish language watching those. But you will be missing out on the culture. For European Portuguese, however, that is a lot harder to come across because unless it's a children's show, we will have subtitles and keep the original audio. Now, since language is really the main key to a people's culture, it's only beneficial if you can combine the two, language and culture, in one sole activity. Okay, step number two, the different ways you can actually watch this series. So, let's say you're, you're a bit more lazy or you're watching them at the, at the end of the day after a day's work and you don't feel like you want a lesson. It's just, you know, laid, laid back watching a series. So we're going to use what is called passive listening or watching in this case. What this means is you're going to watch the series one episode with auto-translated subtitles in whichever language you'd like. You might not pick up the jokes, but at least you will be exposing yourself to Portuguese sense of humor. One of the hardest things to adapt to in a new culture, by the way. But hopefully you grow to enjoy it. If you have a bit more energy, then I recommend you notice a word or a phrase. Pay attention to, to something you're, you're looking at um, that you think might be useful in your daily life. And rewind to see if you can hear how it's said in Portuguese. Now, you can follow the transcript in Portuguese alongside the subtitles in your language. This only works for desktop, by the way. Um, and you can also note down and count the words you picked up if you want to make it a bit of a, a game, uh, almost competitive uh, with yourself or maybe someone in the house as well. Um, and then watch the same episode the following day to see if you could hear more uh, the following day. Uh, and this is something people tend to miss a lot, like the repetition really, really pays off. 
with language learning. You always need to go back to stuff. And this is, I think, a gentle way of doing so. Okay, now I'm going to dive into different examples of the four, uh, four first episodes to, for more in-depth learning experience. So here are some tips uh, which you can, you're welcome to choose from. So you know how um, people always say that Portuguese, the Portuguese speak really fast. <laughs> well, I think every new language learner will say that about the target language, but still, um, in any case, see what happens here. There, there's this character, another humorist, actual humorist in Portugal, who his, whose character here speaks really slowly. So there you go. See if that helps, if your comprehension improves. Imagina, estamos todos a falar e ele do nada começa a falar super devagar. Hum? Vatáguas? Sim, fala super devagar. Puto. Fala devagar? Super. Devagar. Tu. Parece que toda a gente tem de esperar porque ele tem que dizer. Tu és. É como se o mundo tivesse de esperar porque o menino Batáguas tem algo sapiente que nenhum dos comuns mortais vai atingir. O Guilherme Geirinhas. Um fica em slow motion. Nunca te esqueças disso. Let me know below in the comments if you think this kind of uh, speed, if it's realistic, if you ever came across someone who speaks like that, or if it's only uh, fictional. Okay, this one is interesting. So on the very first episode, we're talking about within the first minute of the series, uh, a lot of famous Portuguese people are going to be named. And actually their faces are going to be shredded, as in the copies uh, on a piece of paper. Um, and assuming you don't know them, you just landed in Portugal, maybe you've been here six months, you never learned the language, you're not going to know. Maybe you know, I don't know, some important political figures, but not, you know, mainstream media and stuff. So what do you do? You can just, okay, ignore them, but you can actually like stop and have a look on Wikipedia or just simply Google them and see what it says. Now, if you choose for Wikipedia, it's actually handy because usually the kind of language, biography kind of style is going to be the same. The same verbs are going to be used, is married, was born, uh, has so many children, um, grew up somewhere, and you learn about their profession. So it's a really good way to have a short piece of text and get some comprehension with the added bonus of repetition and learning some culture as an added added bonus. Episode three, this is specifically for uh, Dutch people, or even if you're not and you you know a bit of the Dutch culture is very interesting because you have two characters talking about uh, the Netherlands. So it's a bit of a, how we see the Dutch. How would you even find it? Of course, I'm going to tell you the timestamp, but if you do a search on the, the transcript itself, so on a Windows, that would be Control F. On a Mac, you would do Command F and you search for Hall Holland because that could give you both Holland, the name of the country, or Hollandish the name of the, so the nationality or the name of the language. And then you find uh, the this short clip. O que tem os miúdos? Viste os quê? Duas vezes e 15 segundos no máximo cada vez? Um deles é muito esquisito, o holandês. Não há nenhum holandês no grupo. Alto, louro, nunca se ri. Sueco. Não é sueco, é holandês. Chama-se Casper. Tenho certeza. Pensava mesmo que era sueco, tem arte sueco, tão alto e tão louro. Os holandeses são mais altos que os suecos. O povo mais alto da Europa. Ah, e para a tua informação, estive com ele mais de 15 segundos seguidos, sim. Still on episode 3, um, interesting thing that happens in that, on that episode is there's a lot of back and forth uh, between the two main characters. So there's going to be dialogues, and with dialogues, naturally, there's going to be questions and answers. So if you look up a word like quando, when, uh, again, using the search function, uh, on your browser, or como, and then you get repeatedly entries on how this is pronounced, and this is gold. Ai, eu já, já me habituei a ignorar essas frases, como se fossem ruído ambiente. Uau! <risos> Meu interesse genuíno de saber como decorreu uma noite, eu sou. Tive mesmo uma, uma experiência traumática, sabes? Quando tinha oito anos. Quando tinha não, quando fiz oito anos. Because, as I keep on saying, and repeating myself, repetition does help. 
Okay, episode number four, you get again uh, the same character that I mentioned earlier, uh, speaking very, very slowly. So if the speed is something that scares you in Portuguese, try to understand this one. Because in this one, you get not only the speed, but also the repetition. And with it, you actually get exposed to a lot of possessives in Portuguese and sort of a reminder here from me, but in general, that you need the definite article before possessive. So you don't say my father in Portuguese. In Yeah, in Portuguese, you say the, my father, o meu pai. And you see that re repeatedly at the start of episode four. Quatro. <laughs> o quadro. Agora é teu. <laughs> Está na nossa família há 13 gerações. Foi pintado pelo teu tetra de cavô. Fernão Galisteu Jeirinhas. You also get one of those like short phrases you need to learn in the beginning is eu sei or eu não sei, whatever you want to say. Like I don't know how to speak Portuguese, but um you get again re repetitively a character saying, you say, you say, okay? And that sticks in the back of your mind. The more you watch, the more you listen, the more you pay attention, because having that attention antenna turned on, remember this is more active listening slash watching. It's not the passive kind that you do at the end of the day when you're tired, so. <laughs> <laughs> Another piece of repetition you're going to have here is the pois de. So it's tempting to think in English, at least, but the other languages have the same issue where you, you're you not going to have a preposition after the word after, um, which in Portuguese is also an option, but then it means something else. So usually say after of something, a bad translation, but it's hard to translate prepositions anyway. So depois de, and for example, depois do filho dele, what you're going to have there is, uh, again, the possessive and you have the article. So you have de, a preposition, but then you have the article, u, because we're talking about filho. Filho is, uh, refers to a son, right? So masculine uh, article is needed there. Also, again, this uh, this character shows up again later in the episode, saying, O Ricardo era o Ricardo. <laughs> o Ricardo. <laughs> o Ricardo. Uh, really a sentence that is not really a sentence and super slowly um, let me know I'm really curious to hear if you hear it better because it was pronounced so slowly and then of course you have the words obrigado and muito bem which again one of those uh, the first words you will come across in Portuguese words expressions obrigado In terms of culture, this is a fun one. So obviously in this kind of thing, very Portuguese series, you're going to get a lot of references to the culture. One of them is Kuf Descobertas. If you have never been to Portugal, if you haven't been here for too long, you're going to be like, what? In heavens is Kuf Descobertas. Now, Descobertas <laughs> means discoveries, as in when the Portuguese, a reference to when the Portuguese were discovering the world in the 16th century back then. Um, and Kuf, probably an acronym, I have no idea what it stands for now at the top of my head, but it is the name of a hospital, a private hospital in Portugal, a good one if you have insurance, is a famous one that people usually go to, and it exists in different parts of the country. Um, now, the first time I said it, um, I heard I heard someone was like, oh, kuf, kuf, as if you have a cough. And I don't I didn't think it was a funny joke, but there you go. If that helps you, that mnemonic helps you remember <laughs> the name of the of the hospital. There you go. 
And now if you're watching the series and you see Kuf Descobertas, you go like, I know what that is. Kuf Descobertas. This one is a mix of humor with pronunciation. So we know how the letter R can be a bit of a pain for some people. So we have the R, but we also have the H, and the H is usually the hardest, especially for English native speakers. So this little clip is amazing because it's both hilarious and very useful <laughs> to help you uh, expose yourself to that sound. So at some point, the character says, Rip, rap. <laughs> now, rap, you know, rap, right? But here it's actually the initials of a character that supposedly died. So Ricardo Araújo Pereira, R-A-P. And Rip, you know, it's rest in peace because it's supposedly he died, uh, hence the, the joke. But the Rip Rap, Rip Rap is just hilarious. Remember the video uh, the other day I was talking about Cinderella Portuguese and real Portuguese? Now, this one is amazing for that because in terms of pronunciation, you see it in practice how they pronounce todos os dias. Altogether becomes todos os dias. Todos os dias. I'm slowing down, but I'm still marrying words. Just com lógica, o teu pai vai fazer anos. Imensas vezes, todos os anos. Todos os anos. Todos os anos. Okay, last one for the word lá, before I jump into the amazing advice they give in the series, still on episode four, this very rich one, um, is the word lá. Again, I have a video from a while back talking about the importance of the word, how we use it, because it's something that when I was learning Dutch, I was like clueless and no one could really explain to me. Um, and that really helped, for example, when I learned uh, Mandarin, then I was like, oh, that's the exact same thing. So for, du for the Dutch speakers, the, it's the word maar, as in zeggen maar. So if you would do a search yet again for la, you will find all these instances. Of course, it will show up in the middle of words that contain a syllable with la, even without the accent. But still, you can quickly go through it and see when it, when it shows up. If it's after a verb, you're like, bingo, I got it. That's exactly the meaning I mentioned in that video, where we use it to tone down an order. It's used after the imperative. Okay, it, generally speaking, I know um, I know that you may just want to watch the series in a laid back way. That's fine. If you want to be really focused and use it for content to help you train your ears, I really advise you to check my four day challenge where I give you a really good overview about how Portuguese works, especially phonetics how we why we pronounce things the way we do and then there is uh, an exercise at the end that really helps you see if you can hear better than you did in the beginning at the start and also i help you with your pronunciation so have a look it only takes four days it's like 12 minutes each day the the video it's very doable now final part so final part again episode four Teresa Guilherme Guilherme, in this case, is her surname. She's very famous in Portugal. She used to be a TV host uh, for many important shows. I think even Big Brother back in the day. And at minute 25 of episode 4, she says this. A verdadeira morte, a única morte que interessa, porque a única que podemos controlar é a morte do ego. A verdadeira morte, a única morte que interessa, porque é a única que podemos controlar, é a morte do ego. Again, I have spoken about this before. I was calling it something else, but like by shut way, lowering down the ego, like, hey, the ego is usually up here and we need, in our native language, we can, I, as I usually say, you can talk about philosophy, religion, politics, but then when it comes to Portuguese, your ego is like, Vroom. and who are you? You feel like a very small child, maybe a baby, at most a toddler. And this is something that is so important. When you manage to put your ego aside and everything is new, you're, you have this mindset of, I'm exploring this new way of seeing the world, because that's what it is, of feeling the world even. Um, you really open yourself to the idea of everything is a bonus, everything is a plus, and the cup is never half empty anymore. It's always a little bit fuller, 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 fuller. No, I truly hope you enjoy the series. I I know there's like a million different uh, ideas I could give you to watch it. Th these were just a few. And as long as you're putting your mind and effort <laughs> into Portuguese, don't worry. Vai correr tudo bem.